Hey, how's it going? As always, I have a little advice for people that might be looking to buy an OBD2 and don't know which one they're going to use. Of course, you can go to AutoZone, buy a $30, $40 one, uh, maybe even 20 bucks, and it has three buttons and you got to do everything with those three buttons. And then you still have to whip out your phone and search for the problem online. Well, as you know, there's a app for it it's called torque i'm going to be going over that one i am going to make a video about blue driver later on but right now we're going to focus on the torque one that's a phenomenal app it's free i do have the paid version but it kept turning on my bluetooth and killing my battery and so i didn't really care for it um all the stuff is on the free one that i need so i'm just going to show you real quick my setup um I already had it connected. I've never really had a problem with disconnecting it. That's why I, I um, just already had it set up. Um, on the top right corner, connected ECU, okay. Right here I have my coolant. Some of the cars don't have coolant um, gauges, so it's good to have this one. I never really use this one except for the throttle when somebody really, really wants 100% of the throttle uh, to be available on the pedal. Uh, but when do you really ever open full throttle on the road? Uh, I guess you can do it when you're street racing, but uh, I really care for that part. Um, this one is emissions readiness. If you've ever had a check engine light, disconnect your battery, connect it back on. You go to the emissions test, and then they tell you it's not ready. You got to run it a little bit more. This is um, why it's really nice to have it. That way, you don't run into that problem. Um, of course, this car is all green because it's a solid car. Right here, I have my RPMs because again, some people don't have that on their gauges and it comes in really handy. Um, other than that, it's my O2 sensors. Of course, if the needle is solid, it's not fluctuating like this one's, it's probably the O2 sensor that's causing it and then it's to be replaced. This one only has two, pre-cat, post-cat, um, only has one cat. There are cars that have multiples, um, up to three apparently or four. I wouldn't want to mess with that kind of car. But that's pretty much it. That's all I really need to troubleshoot my cars. Right here, of course, is the cream of the crop. This is what you want to have this app for is to check their check engine light. And so historic and pending codes are codes that trip up your light to come on. And sometimes you'll notice that it shuts off. They stay on the background, and that's the pending codes. Um, it kind of maybe turned off for a few minutes, and then it went off. That's why it's unverified. Of course, this car doesn't have any. Um, historic codes are the same. Your logged ones are the ones that have your check engine light turned on right now. Um, and so you can click on it, and then it'll give you a menu or with all the codes that it may have. Hopefully you don't have to scroll. I've had, had a car that I have had to scroll through them if there's that many, but usually it's all one problem. Um, and so then it gives you a button to go on the web and search the problem, a solution to the problem, I'm sorry. And that's kind of cool. You can get that with a cheap OBD2 scanner. Um, then of course you clear the fault codes. I'm not gonna click it because then this stuff goes to yellow. I don't have emissions coming up, but I just don't care to do it. Um, but it'll say incomplete. And you gotta run the car as if you, turn, if you took off the battery cable and put it back on um, and then wait for everything to come back up green. But overall, like I said, that's all my setup. I really enjoy this app. It's great. Um, especially if you use the free one you only have to buy the adapter which the one I have is very similar to this one it's not this one but it is very similar mine is black with the blue sticker in the middle it says OBD2 diagnostic interface has the lights on the side and it was about 23 bucks when I bought it the only major kind of complaints but not really I have with these are number one the paid version the bluetooth makes my bluetooth come on kills my battery i don't like it 
Um, number two is you can't mess with the ABS with this one. I wish that the developer would mess uh, mess with the uh, ABS module. I understand it. It's free. I did get the paid one, kind of trying to support the developers. So someday they might mess around with that. And number three, which is kind of my problem, and it's not really with the app or the inter or the adapter, is I forget the adapter in people's cars, and that causes problems because, of course, um, I gotta go pick it up afterwards. Luckily, it's always been my family, but I have had one person that wasn't a family member that I had to call up and say, hey, I'm coming back, I forgot something on your car. Um, and that's that. I mean, I had to get out of the freeway and go back for it. But other than that, it's my favorite app. I will do, like I said, a review or kind of a glance on the Blue Driver just to show you my problems with it. It is a good app. Would it be worth $100? I don't know. I'll let you be the judge of that. But if you're thinking of getting an OBD2 scanner for your car, definitely, definitely, definitely recommend the Torque app paired with the adapter that I showed you. I will have a link for that particular adapter on the description below. Good luck and have fun fixing cars.